Waking up. We're Chad, live. Hide Chad, the women Chad's and hands. the children. Hide the women Chad's and the children. Hank Strange and crew, we're in the building. We're doing jazz hands. That's how we get like psyched up for this. It's myself, Babyface P, Walter Keller, Safety Harbor Firearms. We are going to talk proper gun guy etiquette today. Oh, what yeah. are the rules of proper gun guy etiquette? As well as all the news and stuff like that that interests us, interests you. If you've got things that you uh, want to talk about that are in the news, let us know. We will look it up or just talk about it without even knowing what the fuck we're talking about. Hey, you don't use those bad best. words. <laughs> hey, uh, listen, when this goes on <laughs> iTunes, we are in the explicit category. Oh, I, had yes, to put, I had to put us in the explicit category. It puts you so, in the adult zone? Yes. Yeah, so I realized, you know what? I'm not cursing as much as I usually do. Lola just gave me an evil look. <laughs> She's like, what did you just say? But yeah, we're in the explicit zone, so we could talk. Anyone have any favorite curse words? No. no. Who has their favorite? Anyone want to talk about favorite curse words? <laughs> no. I'll save them no. when I need them. I'll, I'll save Lola's them. saying no, no, no. <laughs> you don't want to hear mine, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really. She is. Really, I have never seen Lola like get so mad. <laughs> I wish you guys could see. I wish I could flip a camera on her right now. She's like, "How dare you?" Well, then why are we in the explicit section of iTunes? For the occasional slip ups. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna invite everyone to let us know. Uh, what are your gun guy etiquette stuff? Let us know. You know what? You know why I thought about this today, guys? Because yesterday I found out there's actually knife guy etiquette and rules. Yeah. So I didn't know about this shit. Well, it's just the basic knife handling stuff. You know, you don't you don't hand somebody a knife blade first. You know, okay. that's not real yeah. cool. Um, you know, you just, it's like with a gun. You don't point the gun at somebody to hand it to them. You yeah, know? well, no, I know you don't hand people a, a knife blade first. I don't hand people, like, I always hold the, the scissors, the sharp end, and hand the, you know, hand the handles to people. But here's what I found out, that if someone gives you a knife folded, when you give it back to them, it should be folded. If they give it to you open, when you give it back to them, it should be open. I didn't even know about that. I don't know when. Well, uh, is that is that a thing? Is it like a bad luck thing? Is it just some rule? I'm not a nice person like that, so I don't know. Yeah, someone <laughs> someone out there that knows about this, tell us where the hell this came from and why. You know, we definitely want to know. And then we'll talk we'll talk about a bunch of things in the uh, in the news as well, um, including uh, the Huffington Post has this article that says, you know. I mean, it's the Huffington Post, so you pretty much know where this is going. I can only imagine. Yeah. It's also written by the executive director of the Violence Policy Center. <laughs> yeah. Do they have no bias whatsoever? <laughs> yeah. So no, it says guns don't make us safe, debunking the self-defense myth. So these guys are really did, on. Did you link it in chat so I can look at it? Um, yes, I did. Yeah. I put a link up there so you guys okay. can check that out while we're getting ready to talk about that, see what else is going on in the news. Um, we can do we can do a couple of quick news things here real quick. Um, so it looks like uh, the firearm blog has uh, breaking news: Heckler and Coke. See, got I it hate, right. I, I hate saying it properly. I'm just gonna Heckler go back. To right I'm just gonna go Heckler back. To, Koch. Yeah, Heckler Koch. and Koch. Heckler Koch. Koch. Heckler Koch. And Koch. Okay, breaking news: Heckler and Cock. Koch. <laughs> HK two three three. And HK two three three K rifles. Um, so Heckler and Koch Germany continues to take us by surprise <laughs> and, re and release news like no other company. They just uploaded a new rifle to the homepage and tell no one. They seem to hate journalists to and make our life as hard as possible. See, they hate the civilians. They hate journalists. They hate, they hate yeah, Americans. They hate, they hate freedom. Hate, they is such a, hate is such a harsh word. Don't use yeah. that word. H and K hey. only loves Hitler. So, oh okay. come on! Let's wow, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Damn, man! <laughs> I thought I was a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> so H, yeah. yeah, H and K two three three and H and K two three three K. So have you guys seen this? I, uh, yeah, what do you it guys looks think like, it looks like something they're I'll just. Let Walter go first. They're putting new plastic on an old on an old girl, dressing her up and sending her yeah. back out. Yeah. So yep. so we're not excited about this. 
I take it. Not whatsoever. Yeah. Here. Oh. Do you remember, oh, do, you remember the, um, do you remember the ill fated HK um XM XM8? Oh, XM8, yeah. I wish they brought that thing out. Well you have one? No, but I have one of the posters for one that I got way. <laughs> That's all you're ever gonna get. <laughs> well, thank God, because all that was was a rehashed HK thirty six in plastic. That's all it was. Yep. It wasn't anything. That's what this is too. Yeah, it wasn't anything special. It just looked cool. Yeah. You know, well, cool for a for, if you're going to use it in a sci fi movie or something. Let me see for anybody that wants a. Let uh, me see it again. Uh, Let's see it. Let's see it, Walter. I'm going to lock the page. Make me do that again. Come on, get get bring it bring it let down. Me, let me move. I, what's a poster on the wall? Man. Bring it down before I start cursing more. Um, oh, there's, people, get, there's people in the chat like, what is going on with Hank Strange? I curse like a sailor. Me? Ask Lola. The reason why there's not a lot of cursing on the channel. Oh, that looks that looks like a cipher. That looks like um, you know when they tested them, they actually melted. Wow. It's a G36 with with a plastic housing. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. So none of those ever got it. Oh, I like your skulls, Walter. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Got, I didn't know you were into skulls. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was the only the king of no. the skulls around here. Those are, those are the last guys that try to rob them. <laughs> <laughs> we no, shrunk their massive. skulls. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So the HK thing, you know, HK doesn't care about us. We don't care about them. That's right. what I'm going to say. I'm sure there's folks out there that care about that, but whatever. So Jard, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this company. This is yes, another Jard. TFB thing. Jard releases new J68 bullpup pistol. Caliber carbine and nine millimeter, forty and forty five ACP. I saw this at Shot Show. Yeah. I don't know what the news is here. Um, releases new J16. Yeah, it's not incredibly. You know, there's people out there that say bullpups are. Ugly. Oh. This is oh, not an God. attractive bullpup. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, it's not a bullpup. <laughs> it's yeah. um. So. That's the fire. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we Kyle saw this at Shot like Show, it, right, yeah. Walter? Yes, we did. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I, they had a <laughs> they had a review of them in the Firearms News, formerly Shotgun News. Okay. And they said they worked fine, but they're just kind of hideous. Uh, they're kind of fugly, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. My opinion, my opinion. You know? Yeah. The, oh, the, the people from the company were nice when we saw them at Shot Show. They also make a they, Oh wait a minute, that's not the same one they had before. So that's they changed the, something on this. Yeah, okay. that's got, they've know. actually they've actually made it a little more sexy. So, really? <laughs> oh my God! I can't imagine it looking worse than this. Yeah, they didn't look. Yeah, I, I don't know what Walter is talking about. I don't okay, really. Well, yeah, they had previously taken out the J67 rifle. Oh, okay. that was the old version, I guess. Oh. This is the J68. Well, my complaint yeah. with it is you have this ginormous frame and this little oh. bitty pecker of a, a magazine sticking out. And it's like, you know, where, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, where's the beef? Yeah, what is yeah. the point? It should be a lot shorter than that, like some kind of. Well, and very slim line, my opinion. But yeah, so, maybe we'll have to work on that. Yeah, someone's gonna have to do something about this and make it a little bit better. Oh, um, you guys have any other news you want to hit before we get into our thing here? Um, um, well, they got the drug dealer in Florida that called nine one one when somebody stole his cocaine. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> welcome to Florida. Yeah. Well, I mean, so here's my question: What are you supposed to do if someone steals your cocaine? <laughs> You're shit out of luck. Who do you call? <laughs> or somebody, or somebody pulls somebody pulls up your pot plants in the backyard that you happen to plant near the gas meter, where the gas meter reader comes and reads them. <laughs> I'm not going to say who did that, but without incriminating anyone. But um, oh, big news! I actually do have some big news that just got uh -oh. uh, just reminded me. Uh oh. The uh, first, let's see, it went through the National Defense Authorization Act, went through oh. the House today, and is yeah. going on to the Senate. Which means, if it passes the Senate, up to 10,000 uh, old World War One and Two 1911s will be sold through the CMP per year. So, which is big news. Hank Strange, Hank Strange, you, you were complaining nothing's going on with Second Amendment. It's going on, baby. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's big news, man. Yeah. So the, the Army Depot has like 1911 sitting in storage that they haven't been able to get rid of. Finally, this bill, if it passes the Senate, which it most likely will, there's um, more, there's we'll more allow than, them to sell off ten thousand a year. There's more than ten thousand, I guarantee you. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah, sure. so so what um what era do you think these these are going back to? Uh, all the way back to World War One. They could, yes. Wow, 
Now okay. you'll pay a premium for those when they come up for. They'll oh, put, really? They'll put those for auction. They were earlier. Oh, they will. Okay. Yeah, those are on the auction site. But your but the, your average every day, like. Uh, it's very rare to find a 1911 that hasn't been like an M1 Garand overhauled five times. So, um, if you can find an original one that's not beat up, it'll bring top dollar. So, so what should we be looking? I mean, if someone can get their hands on these, what should they be looking for when these come out? Like, what would be the? Obviously, you're saying we can't get the really old ones. You, well, yeah, they'll sell the old ones, but they'll they'll grade them like they do the M1 Garands from from high end down to rack grade, and the rack grade is just your basic yeah. gun. So. Okay, who's going to be eligible to buy those? Anybody can. CMP. Buy them. You have to be a member of a gun club that's recognized by the CMP, um, okay. and that's easy to do. There's an organization in Florida you can join for $20, and that qualifies. And then with the pistols, they might have to ship to an FFL. Um, some okay. states, you have to do that. But I'm, I'm curious how that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. The M1, M1 Garands would ship right to you directly. So they run the background check. They do a lot of stuff, and it shows up the UPS, man. No. Oh, cool. Okay. I got a couple. Yeah. Are you in the CMP uh, or are you in one of these qualifying guns? Yeah, yeah I am. It's a Florida Florida shooters. I'll have to I'll have to get the info on it. But yeah, it's $20 a year. And that, okay. quali that qualifies for a, as a gun yeah. club to order. So, I, did, um, I did the Grand Collectors Association, 25 bucks a year, and okay. it qualifies you. So, Babyface, yeah. just for folks out there that don't know what the CMP is, you want to explain that? Yeah, it's the Civilian Marksmanship Program. It was set up, wow, uh, God, back around World War I, I think. Um, and the point of it was to train civilians to shoot rifles in case we ever got invaded or something like that, where every civilian would be able to, you know, defend themselves. Um, and, oh, God, back probably around World War II, maybe a little after, maybe 1950s or 60s, um, they, they have the, they're the only, comp only group in the country that's allowed to sell off certain military surplus firearms. They're the only ones that are allowed. Um, so you go to them, they have, right now they're basically down to M1 Garands, and they're running out of those pretty quickly. But um, you go, you, I know, they're not going to be there forever. No, I mean, uh, they're, they're, M1, supposed, M1, they're supposed to, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Walter. No, they're supposed to be getting a bunch from the Philippines. Um, so is that they, actually happening? Yeah, they're supposed to be returning them. And then there's still the, the Korean stuff, which is supposed to happen too. Well, that's M1 Garand. I want the Koreans because, yeah, they have M1 carbines, and I want one and of And M1 either. carbines and supposedly yep. pistols, too. So, yep. um, yeah. So, so, in like, so the CMP in this lot, uh, so back to the CMP. Basically, uh, you are a member of a shooting program. You show proficiency in, uh, proficiency in shooting by like your CCW counts for that. Pay the money, you put in an order form, and a month later, a M1 Garand shows up at your front door. Oh, yeah. It was very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. You get a box in the mail, pull it out, M1 Garand. <laughs> so is there, like, typically artwork on those things? Depends on what you get. If you get a rack grade, like the lowest grade. Yeah. My, my very first one was a rack grade, and when I got it, I opened the box up. And I'll I show you my blood. Yeah, not very pretty, but then I ran the serial numbers. Made in December, nineteen forty-one. Oh wow! Cool. So okay. and a low serial number too. So yeah, I'm sure there's some cool art and stuff like that art scratched into like it sometimes by guys that serve. Okay, hold on. Babyface okay, left on. his microphone left on. His you gotta mute his butt. Let's see where is it. Oh, he there we go. Muted oh. him. Oh, oh, it went for the grand. Oh, this is is, this is my my collector's grade, uh, Harrington and Richardson. So it's all new furniture, um, all original H and R, um, and then the CMP will take it, put brand new furniture on it, and put their cartouche on the side. You can see I, it there. I bought a I bought a couple of them. I'll be honest with you, a few of them. Um, but they're great. <laughs> the, the, one of the other ones I bought, I bought what, without the stocks. It was a return from Denmark, and then I bought cool. one, I bought one of the new CMP stocks. And that thing looks awesome. I mean, yeah, we're getting oh, yeah, a little bit of feedback. Is that you? Is that you, Babyface? Yeah, give me a sec. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. What were you saying, Walter? Yeah, so, I mean, I bought a couple of M1 carbines, too, when they had them. And mm -hmm. um, a couple rack grade ones, and then a couple that were, like, um, the up, the next level up. Happy with all of it, you know. The nice thing about those rifles is they don't have any import marks on them. 
so they don't say like you know da 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 sentry arms. Oh, they're, okay. They're they're clean, so that's good. For collectability, Sweet. it's better. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So you know what? We'll we will come back and go to some uh, news stuff. There's always a bunch of. Uh, news things out there for us to talk about <laughs> always some crazy things to get the uh day going um but you know what let's uh you guys want to hit up these uh the rules of gun guys okay etiquette gun guy etiquette let's hit some of those up i'm still waiting for people to uh bring some of those in so let's see i haven't seen that many coming in from people maybe we should do some more new stuff let's do some new stuff you know what have you seen the uh the the uh, Madonna auction that was going on, Walter? No, you got to tell me about <laughs> it. Yeah. Inform so, me, please. <laughs> so, the strange and the bizarre. Yeah, this is actually pretty funny. So, um, Madonna, someone, I think one of her assistants had some Madonna memorabilia that she was selling on auction. I'll, I'll, I'll read it for you right now. It says, a judge halted an auction featuring 22 items previously belonging to Madonna, including a breakup letter she received from Tupac. Shakur. <laughs> so the judge um, halted this thing after Madonna signed like a, an emergency court order. Now, I don't know if you know this, but this letter from Tupac, he broke up with her because she was a white chick. Oh, well. Ooh, so yeah, that doesn't look good. Spicy. That doesn't look very good for Tupac either. <laughs> yeah, that's what, uh, it depends. <laughs> I mean, you know. Well, he he's, said not, that, he's not all inclusive, you know. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not here anymore. So well, that doesn't in matter. Heaven, anymore, who right? knows what he is? But you know. But he wasn't all inclusive. Yeah, I guess. depending on whether. Yeah, I wonder how that works up there. But anyway, go ahead. Um, he says in there that it would mess up his street cred. Well, <laughs> to be to be dating a white chick, that the black peoples wouldn't be happy about that. <laughs> So he put it, he, I mean, you know, that's actually, that's some history right there, in my opinion. I mean, Tupac is like in the history book. Well, yeah, so highly, re highly revered, though. I guess we'll say. Yeah, so that's, that was interesting. But so, I, so here's the other stuff that that's okay. interesting on its own, that letter. And we, we could debate that whole thing. Um, man, I, I don't know. This, he... <laughs> There's lots of reasons why I wouldn't date Madonna, but whatever. I'll be more worried about STDs <laughs> than people like hating me. But anyway, so there's other stuff in there, Walter. It says a previously worn pair of Madonna's underwear, a hairbrush containing her hair, a handwritten letter disparaging Whitney Houston and Sharon Stone, two other crazy bitches. <laughs> That's One's like, dead. That's like the trifecta right there. Yeah, I know. Just, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, By the stuff in cloner now. Yeah. So I think that's what she was saying. Oh, that, that's what her no. lawyers, if you guys go through and read this article, that's what her lawyer was talking about. And so this is from a, a, a former assistant or something that I guess is trying to raise some money. I mean, they said that the, um, the letter from Tupac alone was estimated to be worth $400,000. Oh, shit. Who's gonna pay four hundred thousand dollars for that crap? Come on, um, Come on, you can make a movie around that letter, okay? You can write books. Yeah, <laughs> you could just do a whole bunch of stuff. So. I, I guess. I guess you know. I don't know. But uh, I always, you know, one thing I've always wondered about, you know, uh, musicians that are dead, whether it's Tupac or it's Elvis Presley or Jim Morrison or Jimi Hendrix, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. What would they be like now? You know. Yeah. Would they crash and burned anyways, or you know, uh, or they'd be like you know working at McDonald's? Who knows? You know, Jimi Hendrix would be what like eighty five. Yeah, if if Jimi Hendrix <laughs> was <laughs> alive, he would not be working at McDonald's, my friend. Well, <laughs> but I, I he, understand what you're saying. I mean, you know, once that people die, they automatically become idols, or 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 you know, yeah, they no. become perfect, which a lot of them aren't or, or weren't, I should say. Right, yeah, they do become perfect, but I mean, guys like Jimi Hendrix, they, I mean, these, have we even seen anyone else that was that ridiculously talented? No, in, but, you know, yes, well, yeah, Alex Van Halen, I mean, Van, uh, Mr. Van Halen's pretty good. Okay. Um, but he spent money as fast as he got it, too. I, I saw it, I saw a show about that, and he had no control over his personal finances. He was just out of control. So a lot of those people burned as fast as they get it. You know, Nicolas yeah. Cage, kind of like that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, um, but I, that kind of goes hand in hand with creativity a lot. Not all the time. I don't think that always happens with creative people. 
but they tend to be people that burn from like both ends of the candles, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, um, not too many of those guys live to be old dudes. Like the Rolling Stones, I don't know how the hell those guys are doing it. They definitely made deals with the devil or, the alien, or the alien overlords. It's formaldehyde. <laughs> the, lizard, the lizard people that are in charge. <laughs> yeah, formaldehyde, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, they, yeah, they got it going in their veins, you know? Yeah. <laughs> No, maybe it's just like they took so many drugs that they became indestructible. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, yeah. look at look at Keith, yeah. look at Keith Richards. When he was a younger guy, he wasn't a bad looking guy, you know. But mm -hmm. you know, for people, you know, for a dude, but um, you know, drugs and heroin, heroin, heroin and thing, smoking yeah. and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they didn't age well. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. But he's still here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, it's and it's still. From what I understand, people that saw their latest concerts, they say they put on a good show. His Mick Jagger's all over the place doing his thing, you know, and it's like so mm -hmm. hey, good. Yeah. It's but there's not there's not a lot of those guys that really survive and make it through, you no. know, all the craziness. Mm -hmm. Um Tupac, I doubt that Tupac would have made it this far, man. I'm just telling you. You know, so, Tupac so lived hey, like a really crazy life. Who that, do you think who do you think killed him? Tupac, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with Suge Knight. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 um, I, Suge Knight, yeah. Yeah, because I think something came out recently where I think there was someone who was working with Suge Knight that was trying to take over from Sh and they were trying to they were trying to um, kill Suge Knight, <laughs> and mm -hmm. they they um, they got uh, Tupac instead. I mean, and that's the way it goes sometimes. I think that if Tupac, just like everyone else that was involved with, with Should Knight, he would have gotten away, you know, like Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, well, have you, did you guys, I don't know if you guys are into Dr. Dre. I mean, I know, Walter, you're probably not. Who? Into what? <laughs> Dr. Dre. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. But I saw some stuff. Uh, I didn't realize that Dr. Dre was like a wife beater. I didn't realize he liked beating up the chicks. That's horrible. I saw something about that. It wasn't in the movie. It wasn't in the NWA movie. Of course not. But he's like come out and, and repented apparently for his uh, wife abusery. <laughs> so. Hey, I yeah. guess we got a, hey, I guess we got a new uh, $13 billion aircraft carrier. Oh, really? What is it called? The Gerald S. Gerald Ford. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's real, for real though. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 13. that's cool. Billion dollars. Billion? Is it really? Is that really? <laughs> that's not really. That's cheap. That's probably cheap. Okay, here's one. Here's one more news thing that we could do right here. Okay, Did you guys it, see it. that um, there's a Florida GOP go, uh, gubernatorial candidate, and he supports campus carry? Did you guys read about that? Some Florida. I saw that. News. I haven't seen that, but that's awesome. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Adam Putnam says he supports carrying guns on college campuses oh. as well as open carry. He's currently a Florida Agricultural Commissioner, so that He's, means uh, he heads. He heads yeah, up. Look concealed, yeah, can, look at your concealed carry permit. His name's yeah. on it. Yeah, so that's the guy giving us our concealed carry and he, permits, he, he, and he's running for he, governor. He's a young guy too. Yeah, he looks, so, yeah. You know, so he looks cool. younger than Babyface. <laughs> sure about that? <laughs> a, well, now you've got the beard and you know you butched up a little bit. You're looking a little bit butched up. <laughs> yeah, looking a little bit older. <laughs> I'm surprised he doesn't have. A, I'm surprised you don't have a baseball cap on right now. Or did you forget? Uh, <laughs> you just realized, like, wait a second, <laughs> no baseball cap. Okay, so. Let's go. Let's go. Let's start hitting the uh, gun etiquette stuff. Okay. Go so, for do it. you guys, uh, Walter? You are the oldest of us. I think so. Yeah. Therefore, the most wise. Uh, well, some days. Yeah. You know, you're our gun guru. <laughs> Hit us up with some etiquette. Well, as far as handling or just dealing with people, just, or? just guns in general. Like, I want to know. Um, yes, handling, but just what things should you do? Like, are there rules about? Asking to borrow someone else's gun, or seeing, yeah. you know, when you when you go to the range, are there ways you should act? Yeah, you, know, you don't, you know, um, myself, you know, if you don't first thing come up and touch other people's stuff, period. All right, whether it's a gun or it's a knife or my pencil, you know, unless you ask me, please don't touch it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and if you ask, you know, I'll say, yeah, you want to shoot it, you know. I mean, um. 
One of those so, things. so when you're at the range, you don't mind if someone like approaches you and starts talking to you. No, as long as they don't. You just don't want them to like come up there and put their hands on, put hands on. Touch my stuff, so to speak. You know, I mean, that just goes across the board. But I mean, yeah, I don't mind talking to people as long as they're not annoying, you know, or Mm -hmm. whatever that means. You know, some people, Mm -hmm. me being in the gun business, I guess I'm jaded. So when I go out and you talk to people and all they want to talk about once they find out you have guns, all they want to talk about is guns. Mm -hmm. I'm like, um, okay. 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 Now go away. <laughs> well, you know, cause there's other things in the world going on besides guns. So, right. Um, okay. So you just don't want to, I mean, does it ever bother you if you're at the range and you know, people come up and they're talking to you about the guns? Do you ever think like, oh, maybe this guy's uh casing me out, you know, well, not really, not too much. You can, yeah. you can usually figure out pretty quick. People who know what they're talking about. People are just like trying to bullshit and they play video games. Right. Um, <laughs> um, okay. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, you know, I, I don't know everything, like I said, but um, and, I, and I'm learning stuff every day. I, a lot of cool stuff on the gun blog that it's not news, but it's like historical gun stuff. That's right. the stuff I'm really interested in. But um, no, I don't mind telling people and talking to people about stuff as long as it, you know, they're yeah. not possessed with it or obsessed with it. That's what I'm that's what I guess I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. It looks like uh, Babyface is dropping in and out, so he's probably trying to fix something over there. I mean, I'll, look, there's the obvious rules, right? Like all the safety rules and things like that. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. And I've seen gun. some weird. I've seen some crazy mm-hmm. stuff at the range too. It's like, yeah. oh my god, I'm leaving. I got to get away from this person. I see somebody shoot the roof before and stuff like that. And, yeah. You know. Me too. I mean, there's a lot. You know, I'm not a huge fan of going to the range. I, I do like certain things about the range. I think for the most part, when you go to the range, a lot of gun guys are very friendly. I, yeah. I, cause I usually won't, you know, try to get all, all up in people's business about guns, but most gun guys are friendly and they come along. They always want to help you yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah things yeah. like that. They're always willing to offer tools <laughs> and advice you don't wanna, and things like you that. Don't wanna, so. You know, when you're shooting big guns, like 50 cals, you don't want to park next to the guy shooting his ransom rest with his 22. Mm-hmm. He's got his ransom rest, his 22 in the ransom rest, and he's got his box with all his goodies there. And you let go one time, and it blows all his crap right off the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure there's. But okay, that's, that's, that's etiquette on my part too. I wouldn't sit up next to somebody and do that. So, um, unlike a lot of people, they'll sit down with their freaking AR-15, and and they're not, they don't got the muzzle ahead of the of the cover and the range, and they're blasting away and all the, you know, they, they don't think, you know. Yeah. So what do you think about people who, you know, maybe someone is like new to it and they don't fully understand all the nomenclature, like they call a magazine a clip and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you tell them off and give them a good lecture. No, that's not the end of the world. It's, it kind of drives me crazy, though. I know you want to lecture some uh, well, people. I'm just really like, good. hey, I don't lecture people. I'm just like, no, it's a yeah. magazine. It's not a clip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know. <sighs> You got, you got your high point crowd, and then you uh-huh. got your. Uh oh. Yeah, here. No, I don't. I, I, <laughs> no, you know, let's no, no, they're all. It's all good. It's all good. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got the high point crowd, then you got you know this crowd, then you go Glock, and then you got your HK people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they just don't mix very well because you know they're like looking at like, oh, you know, I'm the Glock, you know, oh, yeah, HK, you know, but right. or he's shooting a high point. Oh, as long as he's not doing this, it's all right, I guess. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Have you no. ever been to a range and seen? Because uh, I see, I've seen this quite a few times. I even had some friends that do this. All their guns are from the same place, so their guns are only Sig or only oh, FN. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? Because I have. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've seen it where they're all the same. It's definitely not me when I go to the range. I can tell you no. that. So. No, I know some gun guys who only buy from one company, which well, is interesting. Look, I mean, that's not like a violation of anything. That just means they're just they're limiting like that their, company. They're limiting their knowledge, in my opinion. So yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. do you think it's against etiquette that if you see someone who maybe does have a high point at the range that you start berating them and tell no, them that it's a cheap piece my, of crap? It's not, my, it's not my business. Yeah. As long as you're not pointing at me and sweeping across the... <laughs> yeah, don't care. Uh, yeah, I, there's a place yeah. for a high point. It's, I mean, I would get I would get that a lot when I first started going to the range because I because I liked Caltech stuff. And when I got into this, I bought a, quite a few Caltech things and I would always get chastised. <laughs> You know, I don't think they'll take rifles are that bad. Their pistols are mediocre. Yeah. Your, your, a, your audio still sounds messed up. What, what kind of microphone are you using? Is it really? Yeah. It's very scratchy. Pull the string tighter. Yeah. Uh, 
Is it is it rubbing on your beard? No, it's. I'll fix it. Oh. Yeah. As a, as opinionated as I am about things, mm -hmm. I I don't usually try to get in people's shit and try to tell them what they sh should be shooting and what they shouldn't be shooting. If you want to order a high point from me, I'll order you a high point. If you okay. want to order the five thousand dollar rifle, I'll order you the five thousand dollar rifle. I don't care. There you go. Does that sound any better? Yeah, that's a lot better. A lot better. <laughs> so, so is there like a good way to go about telling someone what they have as now, a cheap piece of if crap? Somebody like asks, if somebody asks my opinion, uh -huh. yeah, I'm going to tell yeah. them high points. Then sucks. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. You know? <laughs> tell, but, tell you a high points a piece of shit. <laughs> so that's not a so that's not a violation. If oh, you ask asked. your opinion. You know, yeah. of, all, of all the crap I've got, I think about going to buy one just to play with. You should take it and like lighten the slide, put like lightning cuts down it, <laughs> we thread to, and extend the barrel. Yeah, we but had you know, some discussions about it today in the shop. So <laughs> here's, here's how I think about this whole thing, right? Uh, let's equate this to women so that we can get into a lot oh, of trouble. Oh, no, here, here. it goes. Uh, so when we have the conversation about women, like if a guy tells me that he likes women, but he's like, oh, you know, I don't like uh, – I don't, I, don't, like, I don't like skinny women or I only I like, like I don't like I don't like I only like skinny little girls. That's yeah, all I like. I'm right. Like, or I only like black girls or white girls or Asian yeah, chicks yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. See, that's not a real man in my personal opinion, because a real man likes every kind of woman. You know, you can bang in all positions at all uh -oh. times ah! in all different <laughs> if you're a real this man. Is very <laughs> off gun topic, right? Here. <laughs> but I'm just okay. <laughs> but here's what here's what I'm but here's the reason why I'm saying this. It's like cars. Like if a guy tells me that he only likes oh, this kind of car, that's not a car, dude. I don't drive a Ford or I don't drive a Chevy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You know what? I drive, I get in, I turn ignition, it starts, I drive. Yeah, you you can't you can't possibly like cars. You only like Chevys or you only like Fords. You're not a car lover. Yeah. So it's the same, you know, same thing with women, same yeah. thing with guns. If you I'm I'm not saying that you have to say that this gun is the most awesome thing in the world, but how can you really have an opinion on something that you've never experienced? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to have that shoot that new HK just to see it and feel it and touch it and take it apart and all that stuff. That doesn't mean I'm I'm going to buy it, but I'd like to see it. Yeah. You know, I mean, so that's definitely a thing. Yeah. Okay, let's hit some stuff that's come in. So R. Hendry, I, I want to give a shout out to Robbie. You know, Robbie is like a big supporter of what we do here. He loves these hangouts. He actually it, came to Gainesville yesterday, met me at Big Daddy Guns, and took me to lunch. What you guys think? Oh, cool. wow. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a Hank Strange mark then. Sorry. Yeah, he's a, Why was it I invited to lunch, Hank? <laughs> I, yeah, listen, I didn't. I didn't realize that Robbie was going to pay for lunch because I would have like gone for the lobster and steak and all kinds of stuff. They're terrible. They're terrible. <laughs> no, he was a really nice guy. I, I enjoyed meeting him. Very nice guy. So, um, R. Hendry says, uh, "Don't lurk around people at the range begging for brass." <laughs> oh, that, that's a that's a that's a good subject, actually. Yeah. You know, if if I see people blazing away with like two twenty three or three hundred eight. And they're not picking it up. I'll ask them. You're gonna pick yes. up your empties, and if they say no, I'm on it, baby. Yes, so that's different. <laughs> I went. To, uh, I don't just do it out of the blue. That's no. That's rude. You know. Before, uh, before I was a member of TCR. Okay, your audio is going messed up again. What are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with the audio, <laughs> baby face? Okay, go ahead, Walter. We're listening to you. So yeah, yeah I mean, if if you ask and they say. They're not going to take it, then I, I I take it. You know, I'm I was deep priming brass today, as a matter of fact, out of a can that I had in my room here, and it had, I know I picked up half of that was range pickups, because it was from all from vintage from 1960s all the way to 90s. So yeah. Yeah, but so here's the thing. Well, I I guess this depends on what kind of range you're on, right? So some ranges are more open and and more public and stuff like that. So I'm guessing if there's brass around and you come, there's no one else around, you could do that, right? But going after someone else's brass, oh, yeah. especially while they're while they're shooting, I mean, because a lot of guys wait until they're done shooting then pick up their brass, right? Yeah, if they're walking on their brass and stomping on it and kicking it around, they're not picking it up. I mean, yeah, but still, but still, do you... But you still ask, if, you still ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one thing you ask. Or if you're there and there's no one else there and there's a bunch of brass all over the place. Free for all, baby. Yeah. Now, some ranges that you go to, um, some I'm ranges thinking. do not allow you to pick up the brass, right? Because that's theirs. All right. That, yeah, that brass belongs can, to the range. Yeah. Can you hear me now? And does it work all right? Sounds yeah. better. So, so, so much okay. better. <laughs> um, so yeah. So before I became a member of GTR, I, I every now and then I'd go down to the Ocala public range, which oh. that's a shit show in and of itself. In the woods. Yeah, in the woods. <laughs> um, and 
there was one time where I was down there, I'm shooting, and this old dude is literally trying to, like, sweep my brass around my <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, like, sweeping around me. And I'm like, no. one, I reload. That's my brass. Leave it alone. And two, don't sweep while I'm, like, shooting. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's so... Mm. Well, there are some people that are so cheap, they squeak, and they, you know, like... Yeah. I, no, I mean, I, we're, you know, like, I'm not hating on anyone for getting the brass. I remember one time no. I had a big, like, a big shoot on the Hacienda, and there's a friend of mine who, you know, who's helped me out with a, with a bunch of gun stuff. Um, but this is when I, I didn't, I was just meeting him at the time, and he was like, hey, I want to come down to the shoot. And he came, you know, he asked me if he could pick up the brass. Swept he was like, are you guys going to pick up the brass? This dude left with buckets, man. He was no well, joke. Well, you know, awesome. I, I remember, I remember yeah. a time when there was, you know, you know Bl Bill Clinton was going to, Cancel uh, and brand this and ban reloading supplies and everything else. I picked up everything I saw. Yeah, it was reloadable. I mean, if nothing else, nothing else. I can give it away to somebody, or I can. Yeah. You know, whatever. It's, it's funny since I started shooting with Hank. Uh, I don't pick up brass any longer at GTR. I'll just <laughs> leave it because we have so much at the at the hacienda. I'm always like, I can just sweep up all this. I have buckets of two, two, three from yeah, your. We range. do. We have buckets. Oh. So I probably <laughs> have about eight thousand empties. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm close to that. Yeah, I mean, we do have a lot there. And speaking of which, I mean, if anyone wants to do that, you know, we'll, 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 we've got to vet you a little bit, but we will, you know, if you come out. <laughs> I need out, to do a lot of reloading. So, yeah, if you come out, it's safe. So then on the other side of that, what do we think about people that don't clean up the brass on the range? Is that that's yeah, definitely is that a violation? Not to, not only that, but don't clean up their empty boxes. They don't pull their yeah, targets down. You need to pick up after yourself. Yeah, a little bit, you know, just yeah. be, you know. It's as bad as people pissing all over seats in a bathroom. <laughs> you know, do you do that shit at home? That stuff, you're going to hear some bad language now, Lowe's. That's put, okay. Put your Let hands on your ears. Because I hate that shit. Do you do that? You get in your bathroom at home? Do you shit on the floor? <laughs> Why do you Sorry. do it in a, in a public bathroom? Are you scared to sit on the seat because your ass is so precious? <laughs> Who has violated you in such a I way? I hate that crap. That's 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 like a fucking animal, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It is. You I mean, shit on the floor. you in a barn. You, know? you, gotta, oh, you gotta stand on the toilet seat because your ass is so scary precious. Go <laughs> shit in the yard or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, this is a big violation. Okay. You can always oh, man. no. You're absolutely right. It's a big violation. You know, you can always tell someone that didn't have proper training. <laughs> you can't lift the toilet seat up with your foot. Yeah. You I don't know. Piss all over it. It's like you know. It's it bothers me. You know. It's like people yeah. are fucking animals sometimes. Yeah. Now, okay. Sorry, Lola. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, Lola. Now, huh? I don't hear you complaining about Walter. Why she agrees with me. Funny? That's why. <laughs> Am I right, Lola? What? What she? What? Am I right? What? What did you say? Oh, because she agrees with you. Yeah, that's probably yeah. that's probably something that Lola. <laughs> I mean, so, she's living in a house with with uh, three dudes, but we're not that bad, are we, Lola? No, you guys are good. No, we're good. No, we're good. You know what comes around goes around. I don't. I don't do that stuff. Yeah. So here's someone who uh, who who gave this one. Mark Wagner. Okay, so Mark Wagner says one of his <laughs> things is don't come asking me to run it. Mark, Mark, Mark Wagner, by the way, is also an incredibly huge supporter of the channel. So we love you out there, Mark. Don't come asking me to run a couple of mags of my ammo through my firearm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's true. How much? Well, like, yeah, don't ahead. come, don't come begging. You know? I see that it's it's funny because I'm opposite. I I don't. I'm always the if somebody is like eyeing one of my guns, I'm always like, hey, do you want to shoot it? I just ask as quick as I can just to get it out of the way because I would rather like give somebody the fun, the enjoyment of shooting like my suppressors or whatnot. Um, yeah, but and, where's the cutoff, though, like, babyface? How many? Like, I, I how give much? them like five to ten rounds, and then if oh, you yeah, want okay, to bring so your own yeah. ammo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but see, Mark is saying like a couple of mags. You know, I mean, no, 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 that's uh, not happening. Yeah. <laughs> see, like, how do you know if a person is because you're being polite and saying to someone, which it, most gun guys are like this. They are yeah. polite, and they will say, you know, hey, hey shoot this thing, you know, and then they're very nice about it. Um, I found know. also when you're a YouTube guy, like everybody wants you to shoot their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> which is cool but yeah i'm like that i don't want to to shoot up your ammo i mean it costs you money yeah you know? that's how i feel but th i think yeah. there are people that don't understand that they just <laughs> i guess they don't care yeah there are some like do you come across a lot of moochers at the range no. i don't think it happens a lot but there no. are a few people who don't no. get it no i tell you what one time i was in a shootout and i was in a shootout in um 
in um, Cheyenne Wells, um, Colorado, with a machine gun shoot. And um, one of the guys that's big in the machine gun world, um, Dolph, Gun uh, Dolph Goldsmith, he okay. had his um, he had a Maxim and a Vickers set up. And I'm just walking down the line and I'm looking at it and he's looking at it and he goes, want to shoot him? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a wild bear shit in the woods. <laughs> da, 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 da. Shoot the Maxim, shoot the Vickers. And I'm like, cool. Thank you very much. He goes, oh, no problem. You know, it's like. I didn't ask. I didn't anything. He just said, "Hey, you want to try them out?" I'm like, "That's yeah. that's what I try to do." Yeah. And now, isn't it? What's the rules of a lot of those machine gun shoots, though, Walter? I thought like you typically have to pay because I mean that's a lot of well, ammo yeah, going that range. You go to Knob Creek and you want to shoot guns. Unless you have a line spot, you got to rent a gun. You go, but that shoots the rentals are not on the main line anyways. They're on the down and down on the smaller lines. But yeah, you can rent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I even feel I feel funny at Shot Show at Media Day, for example. At Media Day, if for people who don't know, you get to actually shoot the guns, and the companies are there. They uh, they don't charge you for anything, but they do limit the amount. So if, if you know, thirty yeah, round magazine, they might put five rounds in it. Yeah. And we do ask them sometimes, hey, listen, put in a few more rounds. Well, we're making videos. Yeah. So. Right. 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 Well, yeah, know, it only makes sense. You're doing them a favor, so. Yeah. You know, now there are a lot of people that go to that and they aren't making videos and they're shoot and they're just shooting the guns. They're just going there for, for the fun of it and they kind of like mess it up for the guys who were there to make videos. I've never been, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. It's always it's always at Shot Show. We're always there to set up and show our stuff. So for me to go to Media Day or do that or set up there, um, that's a whole nother day and two more you know, more nights and two, right. To the that, guys at 904 who are commenting about only shooting five rounds through the crank, if I offer you ammo <laughs> or a gun, you shoot as much as you want. Don't worry about it. If I'm yeah, offering it, it to it, you, take take advantage of it. If I give you the gun that's got a full mag, shoot yeah. away. If I give you a gun with a full mag, you shoot all of it. I don't mind. Yeah. Right, right. And also, I mean, like we just said, if we're making videos and things like that, it's a completely yeah, it's, different it's, thing. Yeah, I, I personally, I know I have kind of a, an oddball collection and a lot of stuff that uh, your everyday person doesn't see because it's either expensive or like suppressors. Not everybody has them. So I like, I've gotten to the point now where I like seeing other people shoot my stuff because somebody that's never shot a suppressor before, you put it in their hands and you just see like this glowing excitement. <laughs> on their face. It's awesome. I call it, I call it spreading the gospel. Yeah. And then like with the yeah. machine guns, the first time Walter, remember I hovered around that M16 when you brought it. The first time. <laughs> and the first time yeah. I shot it, I was just like, Oh, this is so great. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's yeah. still fun. I still enjoy that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do love to share. I know there's people that have asked us to do some kind of uh, thing where we invite folks out there. I think we should. I don't know when that's going to happen, but we should put that together, find a range that we could go to. Um, some people have suggested ranges like the Aries range and stuff like that. Yeah. We'll make that happen. For the most part, gun guys are very generous and they, they want to bring other people into the fold. I just think with that, like, don't, you know, don't overstay your welcome. I'm sure your mom taught you when you go to people's house. Right, right, like, right. I don't know if you guys have this rule, but um, when you go to people's house, my mother always told me, don't go in the fridge. Uh, I've had this thing yes. with Patrick. Why would you go in somebody's fridge? You never fridge. go in somebody's fridge. Yeah, you just don't go in someone's <laughs> fridge uninvited. <laughs> but there's people who don't know that. <laughs> they got no home learning. Yeah, exactly. So that, uh, you know, that's definitely a thing. Okay, let's hit up some other ones. Uh, uh, Mr. Sumgum says, please don't sweep me with your gun. Oh, you know, yeah. I've only ever had a really bad issue with that once, I think, where um, a bunch of, I think they were like uh, exchange students, like Chinese exchange students went to GTR <laughs> one time. Um, one of them spoke English. The other ones were all speaking Chinese. And they rented the 300 blackout suppressed SBR and a couple like, suppressed pistols and one of the guys they, they're all in the firing line like loading ammo and doing stuff one of the guys grabs the pistol and steps like two feet back from the firing line and <laughs> no. like, puts the pistol out and it's like right next to the other guy's head and i had to like walk over i was like you just stop that you can't do that <laughs> yeah so that's another thing that goes along there right if you're on the range and you see something bad going down do you feel do you do you feel like you shouldn't say anything you know, I know there's people who feel like they shouldn't, but listen, this is pe these are people's lives at stake here. You know, and you, you, you. you gotta I think talk you have to the range officer then, because yeah, I think you also have the response. I mean, you, yes, you you should talk to the range officer, but you know, by the time you're when you're t going to talk to the range officer, that someone could be dead. 
So you well, wanna, yeah, you got to, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to think that's about true. that a little bit. Oh. Now, like I've, and, and that kind of leads me into something else because Lola and I have seen this firsthand. We actually have video. We never released this because we were actually, uh, Babyface was mentioning GTR. So for folks who don't know, that's Gainesville Target Range. And, um, you know, I used to be a member there. I don't know if I'm still a member or not, but... <laughs> Uh, but we were there one time, and two guys got into a knockdown, drag-out fight. Well, uh, you, you two know. were there? Yes, while we were there, and we have it on camera. We never released it because I think it's horrible. I need but, to see it. <laughs> but one guy was trying to – it was a safety issue. So this guy was trying to tell this guy, listen, what you're doing is incredibly unsafe. And then the other guy just went off, and they started – you know, and they're next to guns. We stopped what we were doing. I was like, oh, shit, this is about to go down. <laughs> You know, these guys were getting like getting ready to start shooting at each other, and there was a kid there. Lola is reminding me, um, because the guy who noticed that he was doing something unsafe, he had, had the, a kid with him. The guy who noticed something was yeah, he, he had a, a, his uh, son with him or something like that. And this guy just kept going on, man. It was horrible. So I think that's another thing that you know, if you're at the range, even if you think you're in the right, and someone tries to point something out to you, you might get you might feel like embarrassed, or you might feel like you weren't. Yeah, but you don't you don't want to take it to the point of getting in a fight with somebody, no. you know. Yeah. If somebody's going to bring it up to them and if they're if they're too ignorant to respond, then go talk to the authorities. Yeah, if they're if they're going to argue the point with you, just go inside and talk to the RO. Yeah, You're like, yeah, yeah. Get this guy kicked out. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. It's right. it's just not it's not worth it, man, no. because we're gun guys, you know, we shouldn't carry ourselves like that and it definitely like I went on alert mode. I was like, okay, these something's about to go really bad here. <laughs> you know, um round in the chamber. Yeah. So, oh well, well, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm on the range, I'm always armed. <laughs> yeah, no, I keep my concealed on me. Yeah. So, I, I'm always I, ready to go. <laughs> I was I was completely uh not courteous the other day and I <laughs> I think I made some guy angry on the range just we went to GTR and I, I took some friends to newbie shooting and there's a guy pretty like halfway down the range from me shooting a pistol and <laughs> I hadn't shot my Mosin in like uh, three years. So I was like, oh, I'll pick up some Mosin ammo and shoot it. And the guy's like, oh, shouldn't you be over on the rifle range? I was like, no, nah, the sign says rifle, pistol, shotgun. I'm good. <laughs> he was, uh, he wasn't happy though. <laughs> was he shooting his 22? <laughs> he had like a, a nine mil, I think. <laughs> yeah. Tink. Yeah, he didn't like the blast from the Mosin. <laughs> Nothing against the guys with 22s. I have a couple, but <laughs> some of these guys are real anal retentive about their just their shooting, and you know. Yeah, listen. I have, every range has different rules, and I think you should be aware of what the rules are and try to follow them. Yeah, but still cool. be be careful out there. I think you really, really want to avoid getting into situations where you're fighting with other gun yeah. people and all that stuff I, out there. It's not I, worth it. I think carrying a gun in general, you should. Be looking to avoid confrontation that's at least that's how i am absolutely i don't it's, want confrontation with anything no it's the last resort it's the thing yeah. you don't ever you don't want to do it no you just want to be prepared you know yeah. to have to do it so okay if you guys seeing any other stuff let me know um i know there's i can see like the scrolls just going like this in the comments so <laughs> hey i'm gonna hit up some other ones um so um i think it's mark wagner says he has a, he had a guy offer to stand 50 yards in front of him because Mark wouldn't be able to hit him with a, a 17 HMR. Don't be, don't be that guy. What? Oh no. <laughs> I've had people in the past tell me you can't hit nothing with an HK. I mean, excuse me, not HK with an AK. And I, and then I, I, I'll show people see that 200 yard. Yeah. I can get out there. <laughs> boom. Yep. Ding, boom. Ding. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go out there. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Don't get involved in those things, though. Don't, um, I, you know, obviously, I'm not saying like what Walter is saying, where you just say like, yes, here, I can go ahead and do. But, you know, I think you should try to avoid having like uh, cock measuring contests or kissing contests <laughs> with people <laughs> on the range, well, was, you know. Today, today, I was, today I was watching a video with Hickok 45 shooting at High Point. And he's, okay. he's hitting the gong. I don't know, it's 100 yeah. yards away or something. Ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, it ain't the gun that can't do it. It's the people that shoot if, the gun. If a gun is mechanically sound, it can outshoot you any day. It's you. Yeah, that yeah you, can, to shoot. you can pick up that nasty old Mosin gun that's 100 yes. years old, and you can still shoot 500 yards Yep. if you know how to do it. Yeah, somebody <laughs> always wants to. I remember, I don't know if you guys know Brothers Keeper, but he's, he's a pretty cool uh, YouTube guy. Huh? I think I've heard the name. 
Yeah, he, he. I don't think he makes videos as much. He's a he's a police officer, um, but he does make YouTube videos, and I, and he's got a really cool KSG video because some kid was playing video games and said in the video game that KSG is not accurate. Shotguns aren't accurate at distance, so he proved that. Uh, yeah, it could be accurate wow. at distance. If games, you're shooting slugs and stuff like that, games ruin guns completely. Well, I forget who did it. Where he wanted to see how how far he could shoot with a nine millimeter. And with a nine millimeter, no, car, with a nine millimeter carbine, yeah, two hundred yards, three hundred yards. You know, you got to aim like artillery piece to do yeah, it. But you but can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, Iraq veteran has a series of videos where they talk about how far can you kill from. Yeah, yeah, they use the old military standard of like through a piece of plywood will count as a kill. Yeah, oh yeah. They were so. shooting with, on that nine millimeter video. They were shooting plywood at the same time, and it was penetrating the plywood at yeah. a couple three hundred yards. Yeah, yeah that'll but, kill. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but do you think so? As a gun guy, it's definitely is it a violation to get into these things? Like, oh, that gun is no good. You can't do anything with this. A twenty two doesn't kill anyone. Do you yeah, think sure. those kinds I mean, of things? Like you said, it's good to talk about stuff. It's okay. It's good to talk about it, but don't get to the point where as long as it it doesn't get confrontational, you know. I mean, you know. And definitely don't offer to like go stand out in front of the. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's just that's just that's just beating the chest. I mean, unless you're in the Russian special. Did you guys see the video? Uh, Russian, yes. Special operators doing that stuff, or and ask each other. Yeah, and of course our our friend VSO has done that. You know, he's a badass. A lot of people got mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah. that? It was breaking up on my end when you were talking. No, I said I said our friend. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video with the Russian guys that were doing that stuff where they were getting in front of the target and and uh, other guys were shooting down range at them. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. No. Yeah, there's some video. I think it's circulating on the Facebooks right there now. Those are Sputznets. Yeah, the Spetsnaz guys. Yeah, Spetsnaz guys. Also, VSO has done some stuff like that. I don't know if you know who the uh, VSO gun channel is. He's one of my buddies, Curtis. Um, he's done some uh, crazy stuff. But, you know, Curtis is a special dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he likes that kind of trouble. And, you know, he's the, he's a professional as well. And the guys in that, if you look at, first of all, I don't think there's anything wrong with what they were doing in the video, not the Russian guys or not him, you know, that's them, things that they agree to. I might not necessarily agree with those things. Um, under certain circumstances, I get it. I see what it is. You might have to, in, in real life, you may have to shoot downrange. If someone you care about is downrange and someone else has them hostage, you know, you need oh, to. yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I'm not letting any. I'm not letting someone walk away from me with someone that I really care about. No, they're going to, they're gonna, if there's some exposed, uh, I'm going to carefully take a shot at it. Yeah. So, but those are special, in my personal opinion, the training and all all that kind of stuff is not something I take lightly. You know, you don't do that with people who are not aware of what they're doing. And and I think you just don't get into these kind of things where you offer to go stand down range. No, no, no. You know, and if anyone does it, don't do it. You know, avoid that. I well, think that's if you're that stupid, then you get what you get, I guess. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't stop stupid. It just, no. you know, you can't. You know, like, <laughs> sorry, you can't. I mean, it's... Or 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 you gotta you gotta prove it won't be proven anything when you're dead. So yeah, Darwinism takes over. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, as I say, clean the gene pool. So. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but you you don't want to be that cleaner. <laughs> no, you I'm know? not gonna shoot Unless, anybody. Why would I yeah. do that? That's just an expression, you know, because people don't right. think, you know, they they think it's the gun's fault most of the time, and it's not the gun's fault. Trust me. Yeah. I know from experience. Once I figured out how to shoot things a little better. You can hit a lot of things with some crappy guns. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I think Pinger556 said he had to stop some young adults trying to sight in a scope with one of them downrange checking where the shots were landing. No. How? <laughs> wow. Oh, hang on. You, you broke you broke up bad. Was, yeah, was wrong so what? I said that Pinger556, he had to stop some young, some young people who were trying to sight in a scope, and one of them was downrange checking and reporting back where the shots were landing. No, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> did you hear that, Walter? Yes, I did. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> You're stunned. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, well, here it says you might get shot. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's 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 pretty bad. And uh, and he did the right thing in that case. I mean, I think that. You know, we were talking about that a little bit before. When you see people doing things like this, you know, it, it's definitely your responsibility to step in and, uh, 
not only save a life, but try to correct people. Listen, there are people out there that just don't understand these things. You know, as I always say, there's people that shouldn't stuff. be there's people that shouldn't be driving, and there should there's people that shouldn't have guns. Period. So, how do you not understand? You should not shoot past your friend. <laughs> just oh god. Yeah, someone. Uh, I'm gonna... How many how many bulletproof uh, how many bulletproof vest desks are there? <laughs> you can put lots put a put, what, put a big old encyclopedia in front of you and prove it. Fifty won't go yeah. through it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So okay, let's um. Okay, you guys have anything? Uh, Lola's like loading some up for me right now. So you guys have any other etiquette things here? We can go. There's a bunch of these. Oh, I'm sure well. that we can go. Know, how, know how to handle guns? I had to correct my friend the other day. So it wasn't with this one. Um, he had my old trooper, which is a piece of shit. But he mm -hmm. took he took my trooper and, like in a movie, slammed the cylinder home sideways. And I was like, it's a shitty trooper, so I don't mind. But never do that to my pipe out. I will murder you. You can bend something, break something. Know to, know how to handle the gun correctly, and don't break somebody else's firearm. Um, yeah. So yeah, just you know, um, there's. I think before you before you do certain things with people's guns, you should definitely ask. <laughs> yes. So oh, you hey. should go ahead. At the um, at the uh, the shoot recently there at the uh, Aries Center. Mm -hmm. Um, I forget what uh, the N the NFA shoot. Mm -hmm. um, one of my friends has one of my rifles, and he brought it there, and a round got stuck in the chamber, and one of the arrows smashed the guns on the butt on the ground so hard it broke the steel stock. Whoa. What? <laughs> yeah, I'd never seen it happen before. I... And, I, and I was just like, I said to him, I said, what the fuck happened? <laughs> you know, because it's like, <laughs> you know, wow. pardon my French, but what the hell happened? He goes, oh, the guy was beating on the ground, and the stock broke. I said, guess what? That's the first time that's ever happened. What kind of, what kind of gun was it? It was one of my 50 cals. So he thought by beat, you know, like, you know how you take like an AK or something and the round gets stuck? You can yeah. kind of hit it on the ground and it'll cause it to break free. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. understand well, what you're saying. With a bolt action rifle, if it isn't open, like I was. It doesn't work like that. You can't beat it open on the ground. It won't, no. it won't work. Well, this guy hit it so hard at such an angle that it busted the stock. And uh, I was just, I was just amazed, you know, it's like, and that's an RO person, right? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure what the circumstances. There was are a lot there. of monkey. But if anybody that well, I'll probably get banned from any. There was a lot of monkey business going on at the NFA shoot, open beverages on the line, stuff like that. Um, I understand. You know, there was I, other there was other monkey business after hours too. That uh, no, <laughs> I understand that, and <laughs> and I think I think in in um in in those cases, you know, these are things that should be brought to people's attention. You know, those kinds of things are probably happening without the the people that were organizing that being aware of what's happening. It, you know, it, well, it's it's a big crazy event, and you're gonna and, have you're gonna have lots and lots of people at a thing shooting lots and lots of guns. You need to have lots and lots of people watching things. Yeah. Sorry. So that's that's the whole case of what's going on there, and definitely, you know, if you're if you're aware of those kinds of things going on, I think you should try to stop it because people get really badly hurt well, under those circumstances. Yeah. yeah. So well, let's uh, let's you know. Survey says uh, I won't be there. Yeah. So let's uh, let's move on here. Um, the EDC guy says he gets asked all the time, like, are my sights on my gun off? He takes it. He shoot. You know. He shoots Perfectly it. And hits the target. <laughs> yeah, and says no. Just keep practicing. Yeah, you need to practice more. <laughs> yeah, um, and then someone. What you were talking about, babyface? Someone said gamers have a bad idea of real guns versus video game guns, right? So, so okay. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if either of you are gamers at all. Um, no. <laughs> I'm so, not. so in video games, basically, what it comes down to in video games, they have to balance things out and give things downsides that they wouldn't have in real life to kind of make it more balanced and fair. Yeah. They do try to make it realistic, but obviously some you do. can't make some it do. 100%. Um, but yeah. a lot of games, a lot of games they will like, um. uh, I have friends all the time that are like, do suppressors, because in video games, if you put a suppressor on, it will either like change your point of impact or like make it like not hit as hard. The gun doesn't shoot as, as hit as hard and do as much damage. And they're always like, "Do does it like mess with your velocity?" And I'm like, "No, it actually increases velocity a little bit." There's, there's like other than weight, there's no downside to a suppressor. But for the game, I guess they have to balance it somehow. Um, shotguns don't, <laughs> if, in like a video game, a shotgun won't pa work past twenty, like twenty feet. 
which is total bullshit. If anybody's ever shot a shotgun, you know you can hit way out, even with yeah. like buck shot, bird shot, it'll go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then, the funny thing on the flip side of that is machine guns. In most video games, you pull a trigger and it's like perfectly on target the whole time. And for anybody that shot a machine gun knows that it's like <laughs> it doesn't do that. It's like brrr. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It, it's funny. Video games really ruin how people see or how kids, younger people my age, oh, probably per- perceive guns. I could tell you about the kids. Um, with <laughs> just being a former uh, scoutmaster, um, we go camping with the boys, and um, um, I brought some other guns besides twenty twos, and you know, like an M one Garand and stuff. So yeah. they're used to seeing all that stuff in those things, and pow, 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 pow. They pick up M1 Grand and get one round off, and it's like, <laughs> done. that hurt. I'm yeah. like, you want to do it again? Oh, no. Uh, now, <laughs> now imagine again. strapping that to your back and carrying it across <laughs> yeah. Europe. So some little 125-pound guy drugged that for five yeah. years around Europe. <laughs> yeah. you, can't, you can't shoot it for five minutes. You know. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't, they don't make dudes like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, they do. Wow. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> So um, let let me uh, let me hit up a couple here. Uh, Elon's oh, well, actually, this is let's go back. So uh, Richard Monder says etiquette uh, stuff: shoot straight and keep your powder dry. There you go. Yeah. So that's uh, you know that's old school stuff. Yeah, and so going back to when we were talking about knives at the top, uh, Elon says handle the blade first can symbolize cutting old ties. Um, so that's like old school warrior stuff. Why there's a you know. Like with the blade thing. And then uh, who is this that says, okay, Siphon Anomaly says, check your ego at the door when you enter the range. And I guess he also says that uh, guns and alcohol don't mix. So that's in reference to some stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, I don't think, you know, if you're going to start drinking, stop shooting. (laughs) You know, I think that's definitely, that should definitely be an etiquette thing, right? Or don't shoot, don't drink and then go shooting. You know, as a matter of yeah, fact, don't yeah, do yeah. anything that um, that's going to throw you off. Yeah, that's going to impair your. Well, you know, some people are ability. impaired. Some people are impaired with half a beer, and and others, you know, half a case. So it's yeah, you don't don't want to do it. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you just don't want to do these things. Uh, you don't want to do things like getting high and all that. I know a lot of people say that. Well, you know, oh, you could do a lot of stuff while you're smoking weed. I get oh. it. You know. Now, uh, weed slows you down. Yeah, if you're impaired, yeah. don't do it. Yeah, you know, I, I just yeah. don't think you should get into these kinds of things. Yeah. Let's go Watch shoot some machine guns. Don't even take legal drugs that you know will mess you up. Yep. Yeah, don't even take some good, uh, you know, some good cold medicine sometimes really knocks you <laughs> out too. It's like, God. Oh, yeah, God. Actually- there's a lot. There's there's a lot that you can do that goes wrong here. I mean, and we try to keep up with this, even when we're on the range and it's hot and all that kind of stuff. We make we try to make sure that we stay hydrated. You know, yeah. sometimes we get hungry out there because you're just burning calories. Like, well, you gotta eat, like man. You gotta yeah. eat. Yeah, you you have to eat, but eat, but you definitely, especially if you're in hot places it's like uh, like Florida. Yeah, stay. <laughs> stay hydrated, and yeah, yeah, you know, don't eat pork. <laughs> don't eat That's pork. That's a good. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, I don't think you want me to talk about nah, that. We can, we can save that one for another time. Yeah, yeah. Baby face. Guys out there, uh, remind me sometime in the future to talk about baby face and pork. <laughs> and why he, sh- why he shouldn't go out in the heat and eat pork oh. at the same time. <laughs> oh, is that, is that going to be another thing about that shoot at the Aries training? Yeah, there you go. We can we can down on them even more now. Yeah. I, had, I had some of that pork and I didn't die, so... Um. <sighs> Yeah, but you weren't out in the heat. I don't know. I, yeah, I wouldn't blame this. First of all, the people of Aries are good people. Yeah. No, there's you know? nothing wrong with I, – I met the owners and stuff, and there's nothing wrong with yeah, them. It's they're very just, good guys. And unfortunately, one of the guys that runs that, like, went through a horrible tragedy that I'm not going to get into yeah. recently. But it's pretty It's pretty horrible. Just imagine the worst thing that can happen to you as a parent. You know, they're good guys. And, you know, even even everyone that puts on the NFA thing are good guys. Obviously, some, some bad things happen. And I think that people that go to events and get into bullshit like that, you know, it starts with them. Right. I know I know what you were saying that, you know, you, you have to try to manage those things. And that's yeah, why like, you, once once it starts, it's hard to stop it. And, and, and yeah. if you let it if you let it start, you know, people expect it. Yeah, I think it's definitely, uh, you know, we have to somehow police ourselves and there's certain things like I'm not trying to come down on anyone for doing anything. I'm not against people who get high. I'm not against people who drink. There's just certain things that you should not mix. 
No. Well, you know, you can party. You can party after the after the shoot, and you know, but not when you're shooting. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Uh, and and get somewhere safe before you start partying. <laughs> you know, don't start partying, and then you still have to go home and all that kind of stuff. I'm not figure trying out, to be preachy. <laughs> figure out where you're going to sleep first. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Let's move. Let's move on from that one. Um, so uh, let me see. I don't know if Lola has some other stuff here. It doesn't look like it. Uh, no, she's that's hey, all. You, um, I meant to any of you two guys ever seen Forge and Fire on? I um, love that show. History Make Channel, it, like knives and swords. Oh, yeah, that's the knife yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, okay, I, I haven't it. seen it yet. I watched it last that. night. It's always good to see people uh, that are supposed to be um, really good doing something get all flustered. <laughs> Making a knife out of a piece of cable or something. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So it's this you watch. This you you like this thing, huh? You yeah. like the you probably like stuff where they make things. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's that's some of my favorite stuff. So let's see. Um I don't know if there's people that want us to tell the uh uh somebody wants to someone people want to hear the the, the pork story. I put it up. <laughs> Long story short, I threw it up down the game. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, should I just go ahead and tell this? And on, 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 that was on your, that, your, that wasn't on the charger. Though. I mean, no, your, it was on the Lola's car. No, let me I explain something to you. If this thing happened in the, oh, Kinger, Kinger, the challenger, I'm just challenger, say, challenger. Yeah. it was down the side of Lola's car and a little bit on the seat. Yeah. If this story <laughs> happened in the challenger, Babyface wouldn't uh, be here. He would have murdered me. <laughs> He'd still be walking <laughs> home. Oh. Yeah. Now, I could get, definitely give you a rule right now. Don't throw up in a dude's challenger. But. <laughs> So, like, for anyone who wants to know, Lola, you know, I convinced Lola to buy a Forerunner. Yeah, nice, pretty car. Yeah. So, um, you know, Babyface and I went to a shooting event that we were just talking about, and uh, he had the pork, which I refused to eat, and he was chastising me because I don't eat pork. It's not like a religious thing or anything like that. I just didn't grow up eating pork, and I don't think, you know, being a fat guy, it's not a good time to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't need the extra sodium and, and all that kind of stuff. But so I didn't eat it and Babyface was chastising me. But it was really hot. He probably was dehydrated and all that stuff. So on the way home, he was sleeping. And well, I was driving. So, so my stomach was already grumbling. So I was like, I'm just gonna sleep it off. When I get home, if I have to like throw it up at home, I'll do that. Yeah. Now this is an etiquette thing. You should notify a dude. Well, <laughs> I didn't have time. Do. What's yeah. the problem? So, here's the thing that happened. We were on I-75, <laughs> and I was doing 70 miles an hour, and Baby Fates sits up in the chair and <laughs> rolls like, down, puts the, down window. the window at 70 <laughs> miles an hour and Blast. throws up. <laughs> Blast whole pork out the side of the car and down yeah. Lola's car. <laughs> yeah. So oh, God. this is what happened. He throws up. <laughs> Out the window, it goes out, <laughs> and then comes right back not in. Not all of it. Not all of it. Just a bit of it. If you've ever seen someone throw up at seventy miles an hour and a car is moving, it, it is not all fun. Go out the window. And the crazy thing is, I happened to be on the phone with Lola at the time, <laughs> so me, it was probably a good thing I had the. Look, yeah, I had, you're like the this. Was, no, the phone. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't driving and talking. It was actually hooked up. Oh, that's but, right. You have Bluetooth. Yeah. So. The throw up comes back <laughs> on me, and I'm talking. It wasn't to all of it. It was just yeah. a bit. It was, yeah. it was gross, but it was just a bit. Yeah, because I slowed down a little bit. <laughs> well, and then pulled off to the side of the road, and then I threw the rest of it up. Ugh. Yeah. So and I had to get off the phone with Lola because, uh, you know, basically her car was violated. She's still trying <laughs> to get over that baby face. I know. I've I've ruined her car. It will never be the same. I I didn't. It didn't happen with throw up with us one time, but we were going down the road one time, going down 19 probably going 70 the same way. And my wife rolled down the window and, and went to dump out a, like a cup of Coke. <laughs> Come back around. And it, and it wind caught it and just went, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Don't never. I mean, you know, as it, as you spin around, the wind hits the open thing with yeah. water and, and just blew it out. It was <laughs> yeah. not good. Not very, not very yeah. pleasant for her. No, no, absolutely not. But I, I guarantee, I, I can tell you right now, Walter, from personal experience. Yeah. Puke is throw, bad. Yeah, throw up is not oh. good. I mean, hey. I, I don't know what happens. Like, what happens when a guy throws up on you? Are you guys like married after that? <laughs> can can our, you sue him for like spousal support? To a level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we're still friends. We're still friends. Um, <laughs> you, de baby face, is not getting into the challenge. <laughs> I'm not always after, driving Lola's car from now on. Or his not car. having a ninety degree summer day pork. Uh, yeah. Didn't drink yeah, a single so, thing of water until we left. Yeah, poor. I uh, felt I felt that Babyface was in bad shape. I was, you know, 
you can see from the like very fair complexion, <laughs> he should be definitely high. You were dehydrated, I think, right? I was super dehydrated. Were you? I don't think you were feeling good when we went there in the first place. So I wasn't feeling bad. I just uh, by the time we got there, I was hungry. We yeah. had to, I scarfed down a nasty pulled pork sandwich and then. Yeah. What I, what I think is funny is afterwards, Babyface is because he was telling me he was like he was chastising me. He was like, "You you need to learn how to eat pork, man." Cold pork, cold pork yeah. sandwiches are delicious. Okay. Right. Okay. You still think that, huh? I will still eat a pulled pork sandwich as long as it's not the one that was because wow. we got like the, the dregs off the bottom of like the thing. It was not like the top layer of pulled pork. It was like it was uh, in like oh. the. The fatty yeah. juices for like two yeah, hours. Blame, blame it on someone else. <laughs> <laughs> blame it on someone else. Why don't you? Yeah. So, babyface, you know, um, I don't. I was gonna say I was gonna get revenge on you, but that's a horrible I, thing. I, unless gonna, you're just gonna throw up on me. I mean, yeah. I'm not I don't know what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Tase me when I'm not looking, maybe. Like, <laughs> what's on the same yes, level? I think people should let me know what I should do to what's you. What's on the same revenge. level? Throw it up on Hey, right? <laughs> Walter, I think we should definitely tase him, right? <laughs> don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Listen, you're 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 my you're my friend. You're my brother. Uh, I'll, I'll let it go. I, I've, you gotta, I've, you gotta, I've you embarrassed gotta, you. You got to work oh, up a really really nasty fart one day when the windows are rolled. <laughs> roll the windows up. <laughs> and just let it go and just sit there and smile. Roll the windows up and lock it. <laughs> yeah, eat some extra beans. <laughs> whatever else does all that to you. Uh, no, I can't do it. I can't do that. Oh, I can. Trust me. <laughs> Embarrassing you <laughs> and for the world. <laughs> it's going to live on the internet forever. Cool. Yeah, this will be on, on iTunes yeah. now, won't it? Hey, spe speaking of farting, do you hear where they had to land a plane because a guy was farting so bad in the plane? I, I think I heard a little bit about that, but I never like got the whole story. I didn't read the whole story, but I didn't need to after I saw that. I was like, oh, my God, that must have been horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> No telling, he probably shit himself too. There's, yeah. There's more so there's, to the a, there's someone in the back chat that's saying uh, crispy. He says his daughter barfed on him in his face when she was about three or four. I guarantee. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you, baby, throw up. That you know. Um, my son, my son threw yeah. up in the room one time, and it was all the way up the wall. Ah. So it was like, the, <laughs> like old face, that's like Exorcist, <laughs> and it ran, it ran down the wall, you know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but baby oh stuff, God. baby stuff isn't that bad. Like Lola and I, it's we've had our vomit. our boys have thrown up on us, peed on us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, how about this? You go done it all. You go camping with your son, who's a Cub Scout, and well, actually, we took him on a Boy Scout camp out because I had to watch him over the weekend too. So he has hot dogs and Fritos for dinner. About one o'clock in the morning, pukes all over in the tent. <laughs> tent smells like throw up. With, yeah, uh, just, yeah. I'm uh, sleeping outside after that. Yeah, that's just, oh. just throw that in the garbage. So yeah. You got to get up. You got to get him kind of cleaned up, and then you got to figure out how you're going to spin the sleeping bag around so he can go back to sleep. How you know? old, how old was he? Oh, God. Spencer, that was Spencer. He was probably oh seven, something like that. Okay, I could tell Spencer's not around because if he hears you telling no. stories about him, he's <laughs> he not happy. <laughs> he threw up two times on two campouts. So. Does Spencer yeah. watch these? I hope not. <laughs> you're no, gonna not get... really. Not unless he catches yeah. me watching it. So. Yeah, you're gonna get some serious, uh, yeah. serious talking to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 last time I puked, it wasn't because I'd like partied out or anything. I was, it was kind of, same kind of thing like the pork. I, we went to a military vehicle rally, and, and it's the night before it all gets going. I had a couple beers, had something to eat. Everybody went to bed, and I'm laying in, the, I'm sleeping in the back of one of my trucks, and I start getting like cold chills, and then I get. Oh, hot. that's it and cold chills and i'm hot and then my mouth started to water and i'm like going oh this is not going to be good so i go to get up to try to get to the back of the truck and i can't make it and i had to pull the cloth away from the side and just so. <laughs> yeah you know you know what the funny thing like for me I, I can't um i can't take opiates like i can't take pa pain medicine oh really I, oh. yeah yeah so because if i do um and i don't like so i've had surgeries <laughs> and stuff like that and i don't take it because you if i do that. What happens to me, you can ask you can ask Lola to verify this. I hear like so if there's music playing and I take those, I hear the same line over and over again until oh, I throw up. To, you start to yeah. get Oh, okay, okay. It makes you know. Yeah, I'll just hear I'll hear something or someone will say something to me and I'll just hear that in my brain on a loop and it'll just loop until I throw up. So that's the last time I remember throwing Jesus. up. And that's why I don't take I don't take uh pain medicine. I don't like taking aspirin. <laughs> Oh really? One time when I had I had my wisdom teeth taken out, this is years ago. I get done and they they prescribed some Percodin. 
And I get mm -hmm. back to the house and I'm, I just got a new Soldier of Fortune magazine. This is back in the day before the internet. I'm reading that and I'm taking the Percodent. It's not doing anything. So I'm doing some Tylenol too on top of that, you know. <laughs> and I go to the I go to the doctor's office, the dentist's office a couple days later. And it's like, man, it wasn't working. I took this and that, and they're like, "You did what? How are you not yeah. dead? <laughs> yeah, you should be. <laughs> I was wide awake. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So definitely. Uh, okay, I think we've talked about this probably enough. <laughs> I'm sure people out. If there's anyone still listening to us, yeah. let's take. Uh, we need some. We need a couple Talking, more. Uh, here's a comment from Mr. Some Guns. Uh -huh. Talking about vomit makes me want to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've He's totally out by now. Yeah, we've totally violated people. Now, no one's gonna want to meet Babyface. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, "Don't throw up on me, bro." Me. <laughs> yeah, we should make like a T-shirt, like a Babyface throwing up on me T-shirt, because <laughs> that's gonna. I'm gonna remember that one on my deathbed. <laughs> You know, baby face is gonna be there. You know, feel it all sad for me. I'm gonna be like you bastard. Oh, you were talking. Hey, you were talking about trucks a little yeah. bit there about puking and trucks. You see where Toyota's supposed to start to bring the Hilux in? Oh, the, to well, they, what are you what are you talking about? They already have the Hilux. That's what the uh, Forerunners are. No, not a real one. Not not one oh, where yeah. you put a dish. Not the one that takes a dishka in the back. No. <laughs> no. They they bring it in with a dishka. You can have that too. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. Well, this truck is not a Hilux. It is a Hilux. It doesn't have four doors and a bed. No. Well, okay, okay, but it's that's built, a Hilux. Hilux. That's where built you, on the Hilux. Frame. That's well, where then, then, so then the Tacoma, the Tacoma is a Hilux. That's not a Hilux. That's a. It is a Hilux. That's a puss truck. Oh, so if it doesn't have like all the special molding that they have in Europe, you don't consider it unless it has that Hilux badge on it. You don't. Uh, Ameri it. American trucks are cars with. Bigger wheels. Well, first of all, the 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 Forerunner and uh, well, no, the Tacoma is made here. The Forerunner is made in Japan, but oh, okay. it is it's built on the same frame as. No, the they're supposed to be bringing that same that same motif in with the four doors and the in the bed and all that. But you're talking about the same way that they do it in Europe and everywhere right. else, right? Because it is a high I, I wish they'd bring it in as a commercial truck and not make it all luxurious inside. Make a yeah. truck, and right. then and then you could and then it'd be a real truck. So. So let me pose this question because I was think I was going to put this question on my social media, but I forgot. Um, this is this is on the truck subject, but a little bit off the because uh, you know what I never I have owned a pickup truck, but never one that we drove off the hacienda. We had like an old pickup truck on there, and I'm kind of like jonesing for a pickup truck. So what do you guys think? I'm gonna let everyone out there tell me. You want an old one or a new one? Uh, well, yeah. Apparently, I'm not. Do you allowed want a to real buy truck or do you want a car with big wheels? Yeah, well, some people don't want me buying used cars anymore because apparently I buy used cars and spend a lot of money. How many cars are you going to get? <laughs> so, Walter, I, I, should, I shouldn't say that. we got to hurt of them. Walter, too, so. deuce and a half with the uh, with that, that diesel yeah. engine that you can pour like used vegetable oil in. Oh, an, an M35. Yes, yeah. with an M35 engine? Yes, please. Yo, I want to have every M35. single car I possibly can. Remember we were talking about cars earlier? I want to have every single car I possibly can before I die. You know, I, I kind of like try to bang – all different flavors of chicks before I got married. Oh, uh, well, it didn't really fully work out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, you have you have to get that out of your system. Yeah. Before it's you get the same thing with guns. I got to shoot all guns, so I want to drive all cars. I have I haven't really ever owned a pickup truck. I don't know if you guys have. M thirty five, twelve thousand pounds. Yeah, six axles or six axles, <laughs> six by six cargo truck. All right, you can drive it anywhere. Yeah. Multi fuel, you can burn old gas, you can burn yeah. transmission fluid, motor yep. oil. Yeah, so anything uh, in those engines will burn. Yeah, that's anything, a, that's yeah. an apocalypse vehicle right there. It's awesome. Well, well do you have you, one? Do you? Have I one? had. I used to. I used to have one, and um, they're they're a manly truck. They have no power steering. They have okay. nothing. So, um, no. one of those things I've always wanted. They're not real comfortable. Um, yeah. Do you know? Do you, um, well, okay, there's a couple of things here. So I've never owned a pickup truck. I don't know if you okay. guys have ever owned a pickup truck. I've never owned one. Um, I'm wondering what's the best pickup truck out there. Oh God, you asked me. Don't start the, that. Come the on. Ford, the Ford Raptor. <laughs> the That's Raptor. Yeah. <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen the video of the dude that got his brand new Ford Raptor and decided <laughs> he was going to jump with it? No. <laughs> no. It's a, a aluminum, he, the aluminum he, one. Well, I don't. That was before the aluminum one, but it was oh, the oh. Raptor, when the Raptor first came out. They advertised it like it was a super duty, high, high suspension stuff. He yeah. jumps this thing and just basically bends it in half like this. Oh, you have it up right now. All right, well, so, he, it was so 
<laughs> uh, that's yeah, that's terrible. But it's just so stupid, you know. I mean, it's like yeah. So here's my question: I want to pose. Okay. What's right, what's back. what's the better one? Which one would you choose? The Raptor, the Ford Raptor, oh. okay, or the Dodge Power Wagon? Which one do you think is which one? Do, which one of those? I haven't seen either. So, Power wagon, so I don't know. What so it. the so the Raptor, obviously, like Ford now went to. It's not a V8 anymore. It's a V6. It's yeah, turboed. Yeah. Turboed, yeah. yeah. So and it's all aluminum. Uh, yeah. So it's lighter, faster, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and to then the, yeah, the power wagon, I think, is about seven thousand pound, like pound, like weight. <laughs> 7, I like to have 000. an old school power wagon. Yeah, the power the power wagon, I think, is seven thousand pounds, but it's a, a, v, a V8. Uh, I think it's. The same engine that's in my Challenger, the 6.4 liter uh, Hemi engine. So I don't know. I'll let folks out there tell me, car guys, you, what do you, you think? Can, you can buy some more property in another house for what you're going to pay for that truck. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, <laughs> yeah. I can dream in my mind, can't I? No, can't there's I nothing wrong with that. You know, just buy it from some guy that buys it and uses it for a couple months, and then you know, get it for half the price. Exactly. Yeah. I, can, I can dream. I want to pick up truck. I wanna, I wanna be one of those dudes going down the road with like my pickup truck and my dog is hanging off. <laughs> you need to get an old, you need to get an old power wagon, my friend. Yeah, I'm always, I'm, yeah. Well, n let me tell you, I would love to do that. You know what I saw the other day, and like Lola totally shut this down. There's a guy here locally that has a Toyota 1970 FJ40. Ooh, Toyota. Yes, yes, that's cool. Yes, that's, there's a, a, that's a, that's a truck. Yeah, there's a guy. So should I get it? There's a guy that I saw uh, no. selling one for seventy five hundred bucks. Oh, How's the body? Yeah. How's the body? It's in very good shape, man. It's in great shape. Yeah, it, has, it hasn't been monkeyed with. It hasn't been just rode out. Um, no, he hasn't done anything to it. He did say that he had like the power steering, but he didn't install it. He didn't install it. Yeah, as long as it so, hasn't been like uh, turned into a mud truck. Yeah. Um, do you have to get out? Do you have to get out and adjust something to put those in four by four mode? Yeah, it lock the hubs most of the time. Okay, you have to get out and lock the hubs. So you know, what do you think about that? You, yes. Can you can you 100%. talk to Lola? Hundred. I'm with Walter. Hundred <laughs> percent. So so you guys will go to Lola on my behalf. It, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> no. See. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. I guess that one's off. That's not gonna happen. All right. Do did you um. So let's talk about this real quick. Have you guys seen the, the Washington Post has an article about Jeff Sessions and his defense of civil asset forfeiture? And it like it talks that you know Jeff Sessions had a speech about this. It says on Wednesday, the Department of Justice restarted a controversial federal program making it easier for state and local police to permanently take cash and property from people not not charged with a crime. Yeah, no, not all right with it. Yeah, so speaking before law enforcement officials, Attorney uh, General Jeff Sessions described what he saw as a need for the program and offered up the rare full-throated defense for civil forfeiture at a time when it's come under increasing criticism from the left, the right, and the center, <laughs> which means nobody wants this bullshit. This, I, I have a problem with this. How do you guys feel about this? I think you should buy a Ford truck. Oh, oh. Just, um, no, I'm just looking person. at pictures of this FJ40 and going, Hank, you need to buy this. This thing's cool looking. <laughs> yeah. I, I found um, it on it's Craigslist. Not, it's, not, it's not good, but you got to remember that our president also is for um, eminent, eminent domain. Yeah. Know? Okay. Um, Let, listen, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that either. Domain, not eminent, eminent domain. And yeah. not not for the good of the people, but for the good of a project or something like that, like you know how uh, apartments and junk like that. That's not what eminent domain was set up for. So the foreclosure, the taking your money, that's not a good thing either because it always gets abused. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and, but remember the always. part where I said like people who are not charged with a crime. This is basically a way that the government uh, and law enforcement and all that kind of stuff could just take your shit. It's not. Yeah. We're not talking about just drug dealers and stuff like that. You know, any like citizens that they it come was across set up for drug dealers and stuff like that. But that's right. not what it's being used for. It's being no. used for anybody that's carrying a large sum of cash on them, and they're like, "Oh, you could be buying drugs. We're gonna take that." Yeah, I mean, I don't know who's for this. It, this article said it outlines everything that he said. Obviously, he said, uh, you know, he had a lot of crap to say about this. I don't want to get into it, and make myself any more upset. But I think it's bullshit. I think we have to stop it. And when there's anything in this world that the left, the right, and the center agree All on, agree on? Yeah. yeah, it's a bad yeah. thing. <laughs> there's a clue. Don't fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, 
I travel a couple times a year doing a couple of shows a year. And a lot of times I have a decent amount of money on my thing and a car full of stuff. It could easily be said, oh, well, he's doing something wrong. No, exactly. Yeah, a lot of you us know? do that. I mean, there's guns and things like that that could cost a lot of money. I think this is bullshit. I don't think we should allow this. I think that to me, this is a big uh, negative or black mark, so to speak. Right, on right. Uh, on Trump, you know, because Trump's in charge of these guys ultimately, and I don't agree. I think that's bullshit, man. Yeah, we should yeah. we we this should this is something that should go away, guys. These places they've been doing this for a long time, um, and I get it. There's there's uh, and there's police departments out there that are using this like hardcore. Yeah, to collect money, this. to collect funds. Wow. Yeah, so you know, I'm not I, I I'm not I'm not a fan of this at all, and and I'm kind of like disappointed in the administration in uh, the Trump administration this is definitely something that I would that I would uh, push back against those guys for I'm not one of those people that just believes in going blindly dogmatically behind people there's a few other things that I don't, that um, Trump has done that I'm not in agreement with well that's you know. gonna happen yeah you know, you but this is this is a this is a big horrible horrible thing man mm-hmm. yeah. and if and if the sh- if like things start to get tough in this country they're going to use this even more well, so I, it's I, a bad sign i think that they that they yeah. want to reinforce these laws yeah and if you read through the article they're saying that they're trying to make it a little bit more difficult to do this but if you're not charged with a crime then what the fuck are you talking about yeah they're stealing your stuff yeah, they're just taking yeah. your stuff. If you're not charged, you, uh, in my opinion, you have to be charged with a crime and then convicted of that crime. But what they're saying is, I mean, you know, what, whatever happened to like, you know, innocent until proven guilty, yep. it's just like, no, you don't even have to charge someone with a crime. You just need to seize their shit and then, you know. <laughs> and then they can't must, defend themselves. <laughs> yeah, and how the hell do they push back against that? I think this is a big deal. I don't know, yeah. it, you know, maybe people, it's like. Well, where's the ACLU and all them? Yeah, we haven't seen the torches and pitchforks on this one yet, but where's Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I, I yeah. What about <laughs> they take they, they they got a lot to lose too because it, you know, I don't know. Well, they don't, that's not their money anyway, so that's white that's white guys' money. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we need to make Sorry, like, my man. money my money matters or something like that. Invent yeah. something. Everybody's yeah. money's matter. Your innocent matters yeah. until you're proven guilty. I guess right. Yeah, I really think this is bullshit, man, and. I, I don't think that this is something that we should just sweep under the rug and let it go away because this is this is a serious serious thing that we're dealing with and there's lots of people who I mean for especially it, you know people doing what we're doing there's people out there who are preparing for bullshit and have gold and silver and all kinds of things on them right yeah I have a gun etiquette question okay hit me or a statement to make all these pretty guns all come in these pretty boxes right. Uh huh. The one that I got my 380 in, right? Okay. Now, my gun will never go back in this box. Nope. <laughs> so, what do you do with all these cute little plastic boxes? Donate them to Goodwill. My in my world, I've got enough stuff as it is to try to stow. Yeah. Um, um, I may look nice. You can sell it on eBay. Somebody will buy it. But uh, does anybody keep their guns in them? Really? Can't you shouldn't? Let me let me say this: people that have more than ten guns, <laughs> you keep your yeah. stuff. Now I'm I'm guilty of this. I have a crap ton of uh, Glock boxes. You like had cardboard boxes stowed up high too. I said. <laughs> so that, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw this out there now. Right, so no, for anybody that's not aware, firearms should not be long term stored in those boxes. The foam that's in them will collect moisture, moisture. keep the moisture against the metal, and rust it. Don't keep your guns in those boxes. They need yeah. to be left out where they're dry. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't think you have to, if you, you know, now without becoming a hoarder, which I don't know, I might be a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to certain things. Um, you know, I think there is a, a, a purpose for these boxes. There's other yeah. things that get kept in there, like the lock. And now, for example, when you oh here's when, it well, I'm not it, well if that. you go to well listen if you're going to sell that thing it's always you always add okay. resale value if you have the boxes and all the stuff yeah. it came with right, right, right. and then according to the law now when you depend I don't know if it's for it's obviously if you, you know if it's a person That's for person, manufacturers yeah transfer here but if you're selling used stuff even as an FFL you actually have to have the lock not the box. But yeah. you still have to provide a lock and He's all that kind of stuff. That nobody's ever going to yeah. use. Did you? Yeah, I think it's a good place to keep the instructions, the uh, the lock. Let's say you're going to the range. You can throw your gun in there, take it to the range with you. So 
I don't say you should absolutely throw them away. Although uh, someone out there says, uh, who is this? Uh, Low Yankee Four says, blow them up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. We can put some Tannerite in them and shoot them. Oh, yeah. Has anybody done? I don't think anybody's done that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so now. I don't want to say it out loud because I know it'll happen. So. <laughs> oh, that you don't want to say out loud, huh? <laughs> yeah, every time we, every, yeah. Hank, every time we say out loud, somebody else does yeah, something. There's some, yeah, there's some people out there's there some that definitely. There's some out there. Yeah, there's some people that definitely take our ideas and run with it, but it's too yeah. late. It's out there. I'm sure someone's already done it, you yeah. know, blowing it up. So um, where was the thing? I was. We were going to talk about this. Um, this Taking article. your money? Well, no, there's this, uh, there's this article about guns don't make us safe, debunking the uh, oh. self-defense oh, myth. I think we need to check through that. Hold on. Let me pull it up real quick. Yeah, so... You know, this is basically an article in the Huffington Post. We know where the Huffington Post is coming from. Huffington and Post. they got the um, Josh Sugarman contributor. He's an executive director of the Violence Policy Center. So, uh, you know, I decided to look up the Violence Policy Center. Funded by George Soros, by the way. Probably. Well, the, the Violence Policy Center, they say that it is funded by... Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. It's funded by something called VPC. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. That is VPC. What am I talking about? It's funded by the Joyce Foundation. So I went and looked up the Joyce Foundation, and that is um, a pro-gun control <laughs> foundation that's out there that at one time Barack Obama was on the board of directors. Does that surprise anybody? From 1994 to 2002, it's uh, Chicago-based. So a, a very wealthy family in Chicago that made their money. It was established 1984 by Beatrice Joyce Keene of Chicago. Because we all know that Chicago is one of the most secure sit, uh, cities in yeah, you know, say Exactly. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, there's not gun violence. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not the murder capital of the country or anything. Yeah, absolutely. It's terrible. <laughs> and so, I mean, this is, this, is my, this is my pushback against this stupid-ass article. Um, so Joyce... Uh, she was the sole heir of the David Joyce, a lumber executive and industrialist from Clinton, Iowa. The family came to wealth um, from the lumber industry, and uh, they had timberlands, plywood sawmills, and all that kind of stuff. So, so somebody had to work to make the money. That's, yeah. what, that's what I always love about these leftists. They always seem to forget that somebody back when that came to this country probably with not a penny in their pocket, worked real hard and made lots and lots of money so they could go out and just run around and do stuff. Stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, and basically the thing that they're saying is that like guys like us that are pro Second Amendment, pro gun guys, the NRA, all that kind of stuff. You know, we say the guns save lives, but they don't see the numbers. I think it's bullshit. How how are you going to see the numbers? I think that if you look at places where people can easily have e easily legally have access to guns, there's there's less of this kind of crime. I'm not saying it goes away 100%. There's less of it because the criminals know anyone could be armed. This little old lady, <laughs> you know, this guy, that guy, everyone out there could be armed. You know, I think an armed society is a polite society. Yeah. But if you look at places like Chicago where it's very difficult to be legally armed, legally able to protect yourself, Look at what's happening with gun violence, you know, and and ultimately what it comes down to, it's not the gun. The gun's an inanimate object. Right. It does it's people do it. that do this shit. Got to have one you of know? these. Yeah. So they, you know, they're trying to they're trying to throw that stuff up there and debunk it. What 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 do you guys think? What do you think about this, Walter? You you I'll more not, more non news. Yeah. Non news. It's it's just another filler article they stick in these papers to fill up space because they can't sell any advertising. <laughs> More, I think more importantly than that, it's deceptive because the numbers yeah. that they're running uh, don't necessarily add up to each other. So, um, well, the truth is not important to those people. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. It's yeah. the propaganda. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. Look, even I, I don't need numbers, man. I don't need numbers. <laughs> I all, know, you, all you need is the facts. Read yeah. the facts. Read the FBI's statistics. That's and the term. You don't need anything else. Old God. psychology phrase, correlation does not equal causation, and clearly they don't understand that. Baseball. Just because two things might look similar, that doesn't mean that they're related whatsoever. Yeah. yeah, baseball bats, knives, blunt objects kill more people than firearms do every year. Yeah. Fact. Yep. 
Yeah. Simple fact. Cars. So probably cars. probably strang strangulation rates are probably right so, up there real high. Do you know how much destruction the sun does? <laughs> what kind of stats do we get on that? Hey, the sun is ultimately going to kill all of us. Hey, I mean, it might, be, that, it might be a billion years from now. But. Can we go back to the news real quick? Sure. Absolutely. Did you see where they found that couple that were in a glacier for 70 years? Yes, I did see that. It was interesting. Yeah, they fell in. They think they fell into a – they went missing in 1942. Wow. Uh, man and wife. And uh, they think they fell into a crevasse, and then thanks to global, well, thanks to climate, natural climate change, right? Um, the glacier is melting away, and they found the two together. Awesome! So that's a beautiful thing about nature. Well, they preserve them for. Well, that one of their one of their one of their daughters that was still alive it was four when they went away. Got some closure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure they were pretty well preserved. I mean, you know, yeah, they said they were. They said they were. Yeah, they still yeah. had a, like a bottle and some food and stuff like that with them. So. Yeah. So what, what were you trying to um, say there, Babyface? I think you were reading. I'm just reading through the statistics on this website and they don't make sense. So this is this is their analysis. There were 7,600 in this 20, uh, 2014, 7,670 criminal gun homicides. That can encompass any sort of crime, any gun homicide. That includes this, too. Yeah. Anything. And a lot of times they include suicide stuff with yes, homicides. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that, I'm sure that's, that's factored in. Um, Within that, there were 224 justifiable homicides. But again, those don't add up because a guy comes in and murders somebody. Like, you can't compare justifiable homicides of self defense users to, uh, you know, black on black crime. I hate to bring that up, but that's the largest amount no, of crime there is. No. Mm -hmm. You can't compare yeah. the two of those. Yeah, and and uh, you know, I mean, what's the number on these murders where it's like gang members that are just you know yeah, people in that, gangs that are killing each other killing and each then other. killing innocent bystanders that can't that are not that allowed to defend themselves. This. I guarantee that's lumped into this seven thousand criminal gun homicide number. Yeah, which yeah, I hate to be an asshole, but seven thousand homicides. How many millions of people do we have in the country? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of oh, shit that's bad. out there uh, killing people, both naturally and unnaturally. And listen, this is what I don't give a shit about the numbers. Okay, yeah. I feel safer with, well, the, the, number, with the ability the numbers, to be armed. They're trying than, to sway this to make the numbers look like it's in their favor, but they're being really deceptive. Yeah, look, I feel safer, and we we all of us here. We live in Florida. There's other people out there that live in other states where you can more easily um, defend yourself. And I think in those states where where people who want to do things realize that you don't know who out there is armed, I think people are safer. And and so, you know, do we want do we want to have these do we want to have horrible things happen? No, we don't. And I think people realize like, yeah, there's a lot of people here or in other places where where they could be armed and we know that I I think you see that it makes an effect in any of these places where there's all these draconian laws against guns. So where That's, the crime rate's the highest. Absolutely. So yeah, why, you can, you know, like, like we were talking the other night, you can't even have a slingshot in New Jersey. Come yeah, on. Serious? Yeah. 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 In New York City, the same way. You can't have a slingshot. What what happens if you can't have pepper spray in New York? <laughs> so I So I this is a little off topic from this, but I, I really, mm -hmm. I really wonder the people that are looking to take our guns away. Mm-hmm. Do they really think that there's some utopia out there that we can achieve? <laughs> but, which I'm, I'm serious. Serious question. Do they really believe that there's a utopia out there that they can achieve? Or no. is there an ulterior motive? And what is it? Like, why do you want, do you just want the power over people? Like, I don't that believe that they think there's a utopia. I think they just want to disarm us, man. So they can do a lot of other bullshit, like take our money, take our property. Yeah. And, and not and not, you know, even have a, a valid, you know, a valid crime to charge us with. Are they going to have your socialist uh, mecca? That's what it comes down to is they want to have. Yeah. Have. Yeah. Well, then you could be like Venezuela and you can be picking out of the garbage to eat. Good yeah. Lord. And, and, and I mean, what we were talking about, like with seizure and all that kind of stuff, this is why, you know, this is another reason why I think we should just, you know, we, we have to have these guns. And, and I think that's why they want to disarm us. So we just go along with the bullshit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you know what? I don't want to keep this going. We've been going like two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wrap we this can up. Talk all night. <laughs> Absolutely. Babyface, anything you want to plug out there? You want to talk? Uh, about? No, I don't have any plugs. The YouTube channel. Go subscribe to Babyface. Uh, I haven't put anything Babyface up in a while, but you can go look at some yeah. of the old stuff I put up. Absolutely. Subscribe and tell them put up some videos, man. I'll put up, I'll put up a video of this. We'll take a video yeah. of this and shoot it. Yeah, we're gonna do some videos soon. We're gonna do some optic stuff and all that. Yeah. Uh, Walter, you have anything you want to plug before we go? Uh, no, not too oh, much, oh, really. Right.
I was yeah. reading the comments here. Somebody wants to do a video with the goats. So uh, <laughs> I said goats gone wild, you know. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> go, go buy 50 hey. or what is it, stenparts.com? Yeah. Pardon me? You can either buy 50 from Walter or go to Sten Parts and buy Sten Parts from him, right? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Thanks for plugging me there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of, a, you know, I'm not the best at that sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, hey. Yeah. Th- well, anyways, yeah. Go ahead. Um, hit, it, hit us with it. Check out Safety Over Fire. Hey, huh? check out Safety Over Firearms for the latest in, in stuff. <laughs> <laughs> things and stuff, stuff and things. Buy guns hey. from Walter. We want to keep we want to keep Walter in business. So yeah. buy some stuff. Buy some accessories. Go to stenparts.com and buy the latest in Sten Parts. Get your get yourself a tactical dome or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do something. Yeah, yeah. I mean something you know. cool. All right. So uh, you know, on my part, I want to thank everyone that sponsors us, including Safety Harbor Firearms. <laughs> They do sponsor the channel. I want to thank uh, Rand CLP, Andrews Custom Leather. We're going to be doing some stuff with them pretty soon. And um, Firepower Rig. Yeah, Sam, Sam I, need, I need a holster. Right. I'm going to be calling soon. I need a holster. <laughs> right, absolutely. And, you know, let's not forget Big Daddy Guns that gives us this studio here and, uh, you know, helps us out to be able to come on air, curse, carry on, <laughs> talk about people throwing up and all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> And sniff and smelling yeah. it first and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. As well as as well as the good people who um, are patrons Patreon. on Patreon, and we're Patreon slash Hank Strange, and we appreciate your patronage, <laughs> so to speak. So I want to thank I want to thank everyone out there commenting. Please like, share, subscribe, tell everyone about this. It's been a lot of fun. Peace.